Michael here with another Michael's Guitar Reviews. Uh, today we have a Tangle Wood bass guitar. This is the Rebel. Yeah! Uh, it has rock axe pickups, but we'll come back to those in a moment. Let's start at the top and see how far we get. Well, it's got a fairly sort of interesting headstock, a little bit like an arrow. It has very, very common tuners at the back. These are found on so many bass guitars, it's unbelievable. And they're super cheap if you get them on a well-known internet site from a Far Eastern country. Uh, they're really, really cheap, but they're okay. They do the job, they work. Uh, and if they break, well, you can get some more because they're really cheap. Uh, on the front we have a plastic nut. This is not an expensive guitar, so don't expect bone, bone. This is a plastic nut. The width of the nut is 42 to 43 millimetres. So it um, <clears throat> seems a little bit wide. In fact, the whole neck seems a little bit wide as it gets further down, really, but that's not a bad thing. Uh, we, in fact, have a maple neck, and it's nicely finished. It's a satinized finish, absolutely fine. A rosewood fingerboard, and the frets have been finished very well. There's no sharpness at all on these. Normal dot position markers, and it's got 24 frets, which makes it quite a long scale, and you've got the option of more notes at the top end here. Uh, this one when it first came my way, had a very high action. And when I've looked on the internet, it seems to be a problem with these particular guitars. High actions, this one was unplayable. It was ridiculously high. Um, you'd be tramping around all over the place trying to finger notes. And of course the intonation wasn't great. So what I've done is I've removed the bridge having first put a capo or capo to keep the strings in place so I don't have to undo them and take them off and put them on again. Then I can lift the bridge off. The bridge by the way was fully down so there's no way that you could make the strings any lower down. And the problem then you've got is what do I do in order to make this work? And what I did was I removed the neck and I put a little shim in at the at the body end of the neck to lift the neck up and bring it closer to the strings and although it's not perfect it's pretty playable now. Uh, the body itself is made of basswood or basswood. It's really really light. So you've got neck dive. Live with it. It's a light body so if you've got a little gig to do and you've got a sore neck and a sore shoulder you don't want something really big and heavy around your neck, so this would be okay. It's got um, interesting pickup configurations. We've got the split single coil at the front and a straight single coil at the back. The bridge, by the way, is worth a mention. It's quite a bulky bridge, which uh, is, is a good thing. It's strong, it's steel. Uh, and the other thing is that looking at it, it's quite similar to those on the Mexican jazz basses, some of the Mexican jazz basses, not all, they vary. So if you're going to buy one, you want a chunky bri bridge like this. Also, it's got little tram lines into which fit the little grub screws for adjusting the height and intonation on each saddle. And that's quite a good thing because it stops them slipping side to side. Not all bridges have that. Uh, we've got quite a nice shape, really. It's all right, it's handy to walk around like that, you know, it's good. Uh, we've got three potentiometers here, two volumes, one for the front pickup, one for the bridge pickup, and a, a tone control that uh, works between the two of them. Um, the, 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 the knobs themselves sit very close onto the body, so it's a bit scratchy when you turn the knobs. I'm not sure why nobody thought to put a washer in between or raise it slightly just so that it's clear of the bodywork which would have been a nice touch 
but these have been mass produced and I mean mass produced hence the reason why the neck uh, and the string height was so dare I say awful uh, and really somebody should have looked at that before they sent these out of the factory but it's been easy to do I just want to mention one thing as well, if, and you probably already know this, so forgive me if I've said something you know. If you're ever replacing screws, when you put them all in, don't final tighten them until you've got them all in. If you imagine you've tightened three of them and the hole isn't quite lined up, you're going to have a job getting the next one in. So always put the screws in relatively loosely and then do the final tightening when they're all, all assembled. Just let me go back a second to this height adjustment. The pocket in here, the, at, the, at the back of the neck, is flat. The pocket is flat. It sits flat. So, And we're going to put a shim into the pocket just down here. Just down there. So that when the neck is returned to the body, it will lift at this end, at the body end, ever so slightly and that will bring the profile of the neck up closer to the strings because the way the bridge is we've already got all of the adjustment down to the down to the bottom as far as it will go it won't go any further down there so that's that can no longer be used to adjust the height of the strings but it can be used for the intonation which means that we can move it backwards or forwards so if you put a shim in at this end it will lift this end which will bring the, the, this end of the neck up closer to the strings and that should transfer itself nicely all the way down. What do you do for shimming? Well, you can take it to a luthier, someone who's got skills to make you a really nice wood shim. Now, obviously that's going to cost money. Luthiers have to train, they have considerable skills and yeah, they need paying, why not? But this is a cheap bass guitar. If you just want to tip this neck up a little bit and you don't want to worry too much about it being as good as some of the very expensive bass guitars, you can use a non-compressible material. And dare I say, one thing that people use is a credit card. Cut it to the size that you want, just a little sliver, like about the distance between the strings, but put sideways. So in other words, about that wide, put it in, it will tip the neck up. When you tighten the bolts or the screws at the back again, that's going to pull everything down tight anyway. Yes, there will be a small gap underneath because it's not a wedged progressive shim. But for practical purposes, it actually works. It's up to you. Um, so what else can I say about this really? It's pretty. Uh, it's got a lovely colour. I love this. This colour is really nice. The varnish is very, very thin and it's cracked. You can probably just see a crack there at the top corner of the pickup. But, you know, again, we're, we're talking inexpensive here. It does play. Uh, there are some reasonably varied sounds. And um, let's see what it sounds like. Let's begin with choosing just the pick up closest to the neck, turning the control fully clockwise and the other one is anti-clockwise and we'll start with the tone control fully anti-clockwise to give us the most bassy sound you can get. Here we go. Now let's turn that tone control fully clockwise to give us a more trebly sound, still on the front pickup. Okay, let's now turn off the front pickup and let's bring in the back one and again starting with the Tone control fully anti-clockwise to give us a more bassy sound. This is just the bridge pickup. Let's 
turn the tone control now fully clockwise. So we're on the bridge pickup, fully clockwise on the tone control, yet we'll expect a more trebly sound. Stay on the treble setting with the tone control and we'll bring back in this front pickup. So both pickups on full, tone control set to the fully clockwise or treble setting. Here we go. Right, let's bring that tone control now fully anti-clockwise for a more bassy sound. So, what's the verdict? Well, it's an inexpensive bass guitar. It's light in weight. It makes bass guitar sounds. The quality isn't great. The quality of finish um, from the factory, as far as the setup of the neck is concerned, uh, and string height is terrible. Uh, so if you are going to buy one of these, make sure you look at that. But remember, to fix it, you've got a couple of options. You can either take it to a luthier, they'll do a brilliant job, you'll pay them, of course you will. But if you want a quick, cheap and cheerful, just get yourself a small piece of plastic, for example from a credit card, or if you've got some very fine veneer wood, that would be great. You will have to have some trial and error, so you may have to do it one or two times to get it to a level that you're happy with. But don't forget, when you bring the strings closer to the neck and bring the tuning up to normal pitch, which will of course raise them slightly, you've then got the option of increasing the height of the bridge saddles to get the level to what you want. So it's easy enough, straightforward, um, so cheap and cheerful little bass guitar. Yeah, it's, it's got a nice uh, bit of sculpturing there on the body, the colour's nice, uh, but yeah, don't expect miracles. But it's all right, it's all right. You can pick these up very cheaply, by the way. So, for example, if you want to start bass guitar, ordinarily I wouldn't say buy a cheap one uh, because it, it can really put you off if it's hard to play, for example, like this one was. But if you know what to expect and you're willing to give it a go, it might be worth having, uh, having a try at that. So, this is Michael. Michael's Guitar Reviews. As ever, I've really enjoyed doing this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Please, please subscribe. By subscribing, you bring on more and more people to watch the channel. The whole process here is about making people share ideas about guitars and be able to share guitars that maybe you haven't seen or you haven't heard before. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Happy playing. I hope that you'll go and look at some of the other videos on the channel. There are loads and loads of them now then, uh, now. Uh, and I'm so pleased that there have been so many people watching the videos. So thanks a lot. Uh, any comments that you've got, constructive feedback, I'm always happy to hear them. Uh, and in the meantime, happy playing. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.